This is just what the doctor ordered. Hello and welcome to Just What the Doctor Ordered, the show where I give you your weekly dose of vitamin cricket. I'm Dr. Nishant Joshi. Let's start the show. First up this week, and India were knocked out in the World Cup semi-finals by a particularly strong Australian team. As usual, some Indian fans, as you might expect, did not react so well. But some Indians reacted in a far more serious manner. Times now. Action begins here. Before we head into our big debate, and it will be a big debate, it was meant to be India's first big real test at the World Cup and the results a disaster in Sydney. A star-studded Indian team has collapsed like a pack of cards and a billion dreams came crashing down. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the bitter truth tonight. India has surrendered in the semi-final without a fight. Can we be in denial anymore about the humiliating loss? Now, in case you didn't know, that host was Arnav Goswami, news anchor for an Indian channel called Times Now. Now, as you can tell, Arnav likes to stir things up, make things happen. He's a bit like the opposite of Stuart Binney, who is currently returning to India after three months of avid work experience. Now, the aim of Times Now seems to be to focus in on inane news, magnified and then add dramatic music, as well as graphics that wouldn't look out of place in a Japanese game show. A humiliating defeat. The defending champions shamed in their first real test at this Cricket World Cup. But Dhoni's men have only themselves to blame for the abject surrender. Now, this sort of thing is pretty much a daily occurrence for Times Now. But what's noteworthy this time is that the public chose not to swallow it. In fact, they rebelled in spectacular fashion. Instead of gulping down Times Now's proposed hashtag of shamed in Sydney, the Indian public flipped it on Times Now, making the hashtag shame on Times Now go viral. Now, the hashtag shame on Times Now became a global trending topic. And for those of you who aren't into Twitter, this means that for a day, you're one of the 10 most talked about things in the world. This time, the only thing that people were talking about more was the departure of pop sensation Zayn Malik from the boy band One Direction. And I wonder, perhaps Arnab Goswami might actually be a suitable replacement for Zayn Malik, considering he'd be joining a group of inexplicably popular people with ostensibly no talent and voices that make me think that they've recently been castrated. Second up this week, and before India were knocked out, New Zealand had already defeated South Africa in the first semi-final in what was surely the match of the World Cup. A question that many of you have asked me as a result of that match is whether South Africa choked. Now, it's a very unedifying question to ask after South Africa had put in so much effort and come up just short thanks to a combination of factors. Corey Anderson kept a cool head when it mattered, Grant Elliott was incredibly calm under pressure, and even Daniel Vittori hit an important few runs right at the end. But from a South African point of view, there simply has to be a time when you accept what really happened. New Zealand was slightly behind the eight ball for most of their chase, and though they had to play very, very well to win, South Africa still had plenty of chances to kill off the game. As a reminder, two fielders ran into each other, two guys dropped the ball and smashed the stumps with their hands, then Dale Stain missed a direct hit from just six yards in the final over. Now, South Africa's greatest strength is their fielding, and it totally failed them under pressure. So while it is pretty tempting to class this latest South African knockout defeat as a choke, I do feel that choking per se is such a redundant thing to talk about these days. It feels cruel to give these cricketers a label like that, when most of these South Africans were in tears after the match and clearly left nothing behind on that pitch. So did South Africa choke? Well, for what it's worth, if that wasn't a choke, then I don't know what it is. But by the same token, I don't think it's fair to labour the point. I think it's fair this time around to focus on the positives for South Africa, of which there were plenty. This is just what the doctor ordered. Time for our tweets now, and thank you all very much for tweeting in using the hashtag JWTDO. Our first question comes from Ankur, who asks, 
If English cricket was a soap opera, what would it be called? Thanks very much for your question, Ankur. And if England had a soap opera, I'd actually call it Neighbours. Because, of course, as we all know, England steals all their players from their neighbours. This question comes in from Jamshed Urshad, who asks, What do you expect from the Pakistani batting now that Misbah is gone? Well, I expect that they'll keep blaming Misbah for collapses even when he is gone. In fact, Pakistani fans used to blame Misbah in matches that he single-handedly won for collapses that might have happened if Misbah had got out. This tweet comes in from Zeb, who asks, Please, can you just die? Just be patient, Zeb. Keep hoping, and I'm sure it will happen one day, eventually. This question comes in from Omar Abbasi, who asks, Why do Pakistanis get fined so much? Well, Omar, I presume you're talking about Wahab Riaz being fined 50% of his match fee after his unforgettable confrontation with Shane Watson. Wahab was fined for intimidation, which you might say is fair enough, but then rewind a few years back when Stuart Broad was also fined the same amount for actually throwing the ball at a batsman when he, of course, hit Pakistan's most aloof recent wicketkeeper, of which there are many, Sulkanayan Heber. Now, there are lots of inconsistencies in the disciplinary process, and for one reason or another, Pakistani players do seem to have been getting the worst of it for a very long time. Why? Maybe it's their behaviour, maybe there's a larger conspiracy. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Just What the Doctor Ordered. We'll be back to our regular schedule starting from next week again. I've been Dr. Nishant Joshi. Thanks very much for joining me. See you next week. This is just what the doctor ordered.